What's good with you, YouTube? You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect King of Gains. Today, we're going to be watching an excellent matchup between Pendulum and Infernoid. And Chip is going to start off by using Spell Power Mastery, which allows him to add a Servant and a Damien from his deck to his hand. Any given time where you can start off with Servant or a Damien or a way to search into your Servant and a Damien, you're doing a pretty good job in this Pendulum deck. He's then going to go ahead and follow up by activating Servant of Medanian, placing it into his pin scale, and now he's going to add a spell counter on it by activating his Dragon Shrine, sending a Dragon Monster from his deck to his graveyard. A lot of people are probably confused on how Pendulum work. I'm going to try to explain to you guys the best way that I can within this short segment. So Pendulum Monsters are monsters that can also be spell cards, and you can activate them as spells by placing them into your Pendulum Zones. Now, they are located in your far left and your far right zones. While they are in your pendulum zone, they are completely spell cards. They're not monsters. Just how if you were to normal summon them to your side of the field, they are monsters and not spell cards. That pretty much sums them. But pendulums do have this unique ability, but before we talk about it, Chip is going to activate his pendulum call, discarding a Supreme King Gate Zero. We love to call that card Donut to be able to search two magician cards from his deck to his hand. The thing that I was talking about, these pendulum monsters have numbers on the sides of them. And those numbers denote how many monsters you can spell summon from your extra deck or your hand to your side of the field. That's right. Monsters in between those levels can be special summoned to your side of the field. Now, here's the kicker. You can't just spell summon any monster from your extra deck to your side of the field. They have to be face up on your extra deck. How do you get that? Well, here's the great thing. When pendulum monsters are sent from the field to the graveyard, they actually go to the top of your extra deck instead, giving you a viable resource of monsters to be able to special summon to your side of the field. I hope that little quick tutorial taught you guys how pendulums work, as Chip is going to normal summon Black Fang Magician to his side of the field, and then he's going to activate his second Supreme King Gate Zero. Using both of his monsters for a Link summon, he is going to make the Fast, the Furious, one of the strongest cards the deck has in its arsenal, Chip is going to go ahead and special summon Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. Now, Electromite does have an ability, and it's the reason why the Pendulum concept is so good inside of Master Wolf 4. I'll talk about how it was hit a little bit later. Electromite allows him to place a card immediately from his main deck into his extra deck face up, a Pendulum Monster. And then he can also destroy a Pendulum card, or a face up card on his side of the field, to be able to add one of those Pendulum Monsters in his extra deck to his hand. Chip's going to go ahead and do so. So Chip's going to activate the effect of his Electromite. And one thing I did want to point out is that Supreme King Gate Zero does have a zero scale. And his Servant of Endamian did have a two scale. So Chip would have been able to Pendulum Summon. But he would have only been able to Pendulum Summon monsters in between the levels of zero and two. Meaning only level one monsters. So getting that off of his side of the field and triggering uh, Electromite's mandatory draw is pretty good. Now, since his scales are a little more decent, he has 2 and 8, so he'll be able to special summon any monsters between levels 3 and 7 to his side of the field. He's going to special summon Mythical Beast Jackal King. He's also going to special summon Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. And then he's going to follow up by special summoning the Harmonizing Magician. But Chip's still debating, should he summon another monster to his side of the field? Yes! All of these monsters are one summon. It is a pendulum summon, ladies and gentlemen. And Chip's going to follow it up by special summoning a Black Fang Magician to his side of the field. Now, he'll be able to trigger the effect of his Harmonizing Magician, but before he does that, or before we start talking about that, you guys are wondering, Cali Effect, why did you move that Mythical Beast Jackal King over? Well, when you're spell summoning from the extra deck, the same rule still does apply. You can only spell summon monsters from the extra deck to where a Link Arrow points to, or to your extra monster zone. Chip has to special summon the Jackal King to where Electromite points to. Chip has six monsters on his side of the field, ladies and gentlemen. If we were talking any other Yu-Gi-Oh, any Yu-Gi-Oh before Link Vrains, we wouldn't be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh about a player controlling six monsters. He'll be able to make an insane board, any board that he desires. Now using that Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm, he'll be able to Link Summon and start playing more of the Guard Dragon aspect of this deck, pro pro providing himself with multiple negates to be able to say, hey, break my board, and if you can't, I'm probably going to win. Using that Dark Worm, he's going to make the Guard Dragon LP, which allows him to spell summon a Dragon Monster from his deck or hand to his side of the field to where it points to. The problem is, another monster has to point to where LP points to when Electromite has some really funky arrows. 
Don't worry about that, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys are new to this combo, then Chip's gonna fix that. And if you're old and gold to this combo, then, well, hey, you guys already know what's happening. Using the Electromite and the Black Fang, Chip is now going to make one of my favorite monsters, actually one of my favorite memes, Triple Bs, ladies and gentlemen. If you Bs, throw them up, because Triple Bs is here. It's a monster that it's a dragon that fulfills the restrictions of Guard Dragon LP, and it has that link arrow pointing down. So now Trip will be able to spell summon a dragon monster from his deck to his side of the field and destrudle the Lost Dragon's Fission. He's going to keep popping off with these combos, as you guys can see. Chip's still making extra monsters. It looks like he's not really doing much right now as he just changed Electromite to another monster and just spells summon a different monster to his side of the field. But I promise you, it has a little bit of sanity to his madness. Using the Destrudo and the Triple Burst Dragon, he's going to make Guard Dragon Archipane. And now he'll be able to trigger the effect of Guard Dragon Archipane to spell summon a Dragon Monster from his extra deck. That being Arai's Vortex Dragon. A lot of decks spell summon Crystal Wing. Some decks spell summon Hot Red. Vortex is the spice for this deck. As he'll be able to use both his Guard Dragons to spell summon Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. And then he's going to go ahead and Synchro Summon, banishing the Purple Poison Magician and sending the Harmonized Magician to his extra deck to be able to spell summon Brawl Old Savage Dragon. Now, Savage Dragon will attach the Triple Burst Dragon as an equipped spell card, and now it can provide three negates. Having three spell counters on his Servant of the Damien, he can spell summon that monster to a side of the field, and then spell summon another monster to a side of the field, and put a spell counter on both of them. Whoa! Is Chip making an insane negate board? As he's going to spell summon the Endamian Mighty Magister, Master of Magic, and that perfectly rolled one is going to be placed itself on the Endamian and the Magic. Chip has a plethora of gates. He has three, four, five, six, seven. He has eight disrupt. What is going on? Chip has a ton of disruptions. I don't think I'm going to be able to play through that. I don't know what deck will be able to play through that. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my card. Look at my hand. Chip has so many negations on his side of the field. I'm going to go ahead and scoop it up. Talk about anticlimactic. Nah, not really. We're just going right into game two. And here's where I have him. I'm going to go first, and Inferno is a lot different. Activating Void Vanishment, I can send a card from my hand to the graveyard to add a Void card from my deck to my hand. I'm going to send Infernoid Seismus. Now, some people might be new to the Infernoid concept. Allow me to explain it. Infernoid monsters can be special summoned from your hand, sometimes from the graveyard, by banishing other Infernoid monsters from your graveyard. Depending on their level, uh, they, depend, they require a certain amount of Infernoid monsters. Some will require one... Some will require two, some of them require three. Now, the big drawback on about Inferno is that you can summon these huge monsters to your side of the field, but it's going to cost you. You can't ex you can't go over the level or rank of eight. So it becomes extremely hard to play this deck sometimes. I'm going to set a card phase down and fast my turn, but I'm actually going to have a really good board as I can now activate Void Feast, sending a Void Imagination instead of the Void Vanishment from my hand to the graveyard to be able to spell some Infernoid monsters from my deck to my side of the field. I'll be able to spell summon Infernoid Decatron and be able to spell summon the Infernoid Jet to my side of the field. Now, normally these Infernoid monsters cannot be normal summoned, they cannot be set, they cannot be spell summoned except by their own effects for the exception of Decatron. Void Vanishment actually ignores that entire thing and allows me to summon Infernoid monsters for free, but that's not what we're going to highlight. Talking about Infernoid Decatron, it allows me to send Infernoid monsters from my deck to my graveyard to not only increase Infernoid Decatron's uh, uh, level, it also gains their effects. So I sent Infernoid Deviati and Inferno Nonuku hang out some devastating effects. It allows me to tribute one monster on my side of the field to negate an opponent's spell or trap or negate an opponent's monster effect and banish that card. Right now, you guys are looking at three disruptions. Why? Well, Inferno's Jet actually has a really good effect. It can tribute a monster as well to be able to banish a monster in the graveyard. So if you're playing against a deck that's very graveyard reliant, then you can actually have a good amount of disruptions on your side of the field. In Chip's case, banishing the Dark Worm would be key. It would be vital. Chip noticing this, he activates Chronograph Sorcerer into his scale, and me reading Chronograph Sorcerer, realizing that he could special summon a monster to just attack over the Inferno Decatron, I'm going to not only banish his scale, I'm going to also be able to get rid of the Chronograph Sorcerer. Chip following up with Spell Power Mastery, seeing that he now has successfully baited my negation. 
He could summon a monster to his side of the field and just attack into one of my Inferno monsters, but that's why I left Void Vanishment on my side of the field. I can banish the Inferno monster to banish the monster that it battles, and that would put Chip at a huge disadvantage, seeing that he needs those Pendulum monsters to be able to make Electrite. His normal summon is fairly important. Chip now following up with its Servant of Endymion. He can place counters on that in Servant of Endymion. He'll do so by activating that Duelist Alliance. So Duelist Alliance will allow him to add a Pendulum Monster or a Spoiler Trap card, if I remember correctly, that has Pendulum in its card name. This time around, you can already guess that he is going to add Pendulum Call. Now, this Pendulum deck is actually really, really good. But unfortunately, you guys wanted to see the Infernoid deck profile on the Kali Effect. So, you guys voted on Discord for a thousand likes. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For one thousand likes, we will do that Infernoid deck profile. And I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a really, really saucy deck profile. So, go ahead and get that a thousand likes, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be able to show you guys a little later. For the people that actually want to see the Pendulum deck, you guys voted. It's on Patreon for everyone to see. That's right. All you have to do is just go to Patreon. It doesn't matter if you're a subscriber or not. You can watch that deck profile. Really excited to show you guys both of these decks regardless. So after the decks have been shuffled, I'm going to pass it back to Chip. Chip's going to use Pendulum Call, which he can discard a card from his hand to add two Magician Pendulum Monsters from his deck to his hand. But the important thing is that those Magician Pendulum Monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. Now that really doesn't apply in this particular sequence because I would be negating the activation hypothetically if I had a monster to do so and banishing the card. So yeah. <laughs> I still do have that one disruption with Decatron, that'll be able to negate a monster effect, and if he does send a critical card into the graveyard, then I can always banish it with Infernoid Jet. But even more importantly, through all of this negations and disruptions, I actually have Infernoid monsters in my graveyard quite a bit, just off of activating Void Feast. So Chip's gonna go ahead and add Harmonizing Magician to his hand. I think he would add a Black Fang because he would need a high scale. No, he's actually going to add Purple Poison. This is interesting. Adding Purple Poison means he already has the Black Fang in his hand, or possibly he has a super secret sexy combo he's going to follow up with. So the decks have been shuffled. Everything's been exchanged. Uh, I'm going to be handing Chip back his deck very soon. He's going to start off or continue his turn by activating that Black Fang into his Pendulum Scale. That's going to put three spell counters on a Servant of Endamian, and now he's going to preemptively use a Servant of Endamian, spell summoning that monster to his side of the field, and now he'll be able to spell summon a monster that can retain spell counters from his deck. This time it's going to be Mythical Beast Jackal King, or King Jackal. Both of those monsters have a spell counter, now he'll be able to use Jackal King's effect to be able to negate a monster effect. So I'm not saying that my Infernoid uh, Decatron is useless right now, but now he has a disruption to my disruption, which is actually a good idea, being able to put these two monsters to a side of the field first before he starts to Pendulum Summon. We know he wants to get that Harmonized Magician, and not all the time you can quote unquote chain block it, prevent me from, uh, you know, stopping the Harmonizing Magician by placing another effect after it, then uh, yeah, this would actually be a good way to just summon the Jackal King. Chip now activating the Purple Poison Magician. Jackal King will move up to three spell counters, but more importantly, he can Pendulum Summon and activate its effects without worrying about a thing. He's going to go ahead and do so. His Purple Poison Magician is a scale one. His Black Fang is a scale eight, which means he'll be able to spell summon any monsters between two and seven to its side of the field. Special Summoning Harmonizing Magician, and it looks like Harmonizing Magician might be the only monster special summon. Risky for the Bisky. Good job, Chip. Only one monster. Definitely thinking about if I have any disruptions, trying to see if he has anything. No, it looks like that's it. That Harmonizing Magician is going to be able to spell summon a Pendulum Magician monster to his side of the field. Chip, going for a little bit of the unorthodox, he's going to go ahead, instead of spell summoning a Purple Fade or Black Fade, he's going to spell summon a Dragon Caller. Now, Chip was actually really new to the Pendulum concept. I had to, we, we had to do so many test games. Like, it was an insane amount of test games. I had to sit down and legitimately teach him how this deck works from scratch. So I got to give a mad salute to my boy Chip. I think he's playing it well. I know you Pendulum enthusiasts, you guys might have some things to talk about that he might not be playing so well. Please, in a respectful manner, go ahead and post down below. I think it helps us as players. Using both of those monsters for a link summon, he's going to make the Heavy Metal for Electromite. But uh, yeah, I also have this amazing thing called Beta Testers. 
These guys are freaking phenomenal. I can't even forget. I have to shout them out. I, they get to see so many of our videos before they're done, and they get to you know point out all of the mistakes. Just get me prepared for commentary, but even more importantly, if a game is not up to par, at least to them, they'll let us know when we just do the game over again. Like, you know, we go get another game. So, yeah, I gotta give a shout out to both of those guys. Hard work and dedication definitely goes for these videos. They're awesome. Now Chip's gonna use his Heavy Metal Foes Electromite to target his Purple Poison Magician. He'll be able to do the Electromite thing and not only add a Pendulum card from his, scale, from his extra deck to his hand, he'll be able to draw a card but he'll also be able to trigger the purple poison magician it is a monster effect when it is in the scale so he'll be able to destroy a monster on my side of the field i can chain the decatron to the destruction of purple poison i don't i mean i it kind of doesn't matter because the jackal king would like lose counters but he'd still have enough for another negation so it doesn't matter i just let it through and i would still lose a monster too so it's like uh i don't think i'm down for that he only gets one negate with that Jackal King. So, you know, it is what it is. Chip now deciding this is the perfect time to attack. He's going to attack into the Infernoid Decatron. And unfortunately, Infernoid Jet is as big as his Jackal King. So, while Chip was able to play around this board, he's in a tight position. I actually have the advantage right now. And he did break my board, but he put Infernoid Monsters in my graveyard. So, Chip passing it right back to me. I'm going to start off with Scary Hours, ladies and gentlemen. Since he has a monster that was special from the extra deck, I can use Void Imagination. Welcome to the world of imagination. I can send six Infernoid Monsters from my deck to my graveyard to Fusion Summon an Infernoid Monster to my side of the field. This is Spice. As now you guys can see why I didn't send Double Anuku to the graveyard and why I discarded Void Imagination, I had quite a few disruptions that Chip had to play around. Sending an Inferno and a Nuku, Debiati, two Atondo, one Seismus, a Harmonic, and what else? What is going to be that lucky number six? Oh no, that is six. My apologies, that's six Infernoids right there. We can go ahead and special summon that Inferno Tierra to our side of the field, which has some really good effects. I'm actually going to force Chip into a really tough position. So that Inferno Tierra is going to hit the board, and Inferno Tierra has some amazing effects. The first thing is that it would send cards from the extra deck to the graveyard, but it also sends cards from the deck to the graveyard. The extra deck cards, Chip is well-versed with the Inferno deck right now. He knows I'm going to send Elder Entity Entis, which will destroy his monsters anyways, so Chip is forced to use Mythical Beast King Jackal to negate the activation of Tierra. But here's the problem. Now that my monsters are lower than rank 8, I can spell summon any Infernoid monster I want from my graveyard to my side of the field. I mean, in his defense, I would just link off the Tierra and the Infernoid Jet to make like a dual little Chimera. And then spell summon the Infernoid monster back to my side of the field anyways. But then I would have been able to get my dual little Chimera to add an Infernoid Decatron. Which means I would have been able to normal summon that guy and fuel my graveyard even further. So... Banishing three Infernoid monsters from my graveyard, I'm going to go ahead and stuff summon Infernoid Anuku. And what this card does is it allows me to destroy all monsters on the field upon its summon. That is too strong, ladies and gentlemen. I can also tribute a monster to negate the activation of a spell and trap card and banish it. Whoa, that is insane. One would think Cali effect. Wait, first of all, why did Chip put that monster into his extra deck? I'm, I'm kind of confused with that. That actually should be in the Pendulum Zone, unless I'm blind right now. But one would think, whoa, Kelly, that card is amazing. It only cost me three Infernoid monsters that were already in the graveyard anyways. I'm now going to go risk it for the biscuit, Monster Gate, my Infernoid Anuku. And I'm hoping to hit more Infernoid cards in the graveyard, which would push me for game. Milling three Pot of Extravagance. And then all spells right back into an Infernoid. Oh, man, that's crazy. Milling right back into a Decatron. That is probably the best, worst mill I've ever seen. Because think about it, ladies and gentlemen. I would have extravagance into two other extravagances had I drawn the extravagance. Th that's not good. That's, that's no bueno at all. But I do get Decatron to my field. I can send the Patrulla, which does give me two more Infernoids. It did cost me three Infernoids, two, or six Infernoids total. With only a net gain of two Infernoids back into the graveyard, but whatever. I risked it for the biscuit. I didn't need to do it. I'm trying to flex. Figuring that I can get into a load of Infernoids in my graveyard by activating that Monster Gate. I mean, I paid the price sometimes. You don't just always get it. 
So I'm going to have to banish three more Infernoid monsters. But I'll be able to special summon a different Infernoid monster to my side of the field. That was actually another one of my plans. I wanted to destroy all of his monsters. But at the same time, I wanted to be able to get rid of certain cards. And this is where, even if he did have the Endamian inside of his uh, main monster, or inside of his Spell and Trap card zone, it wouldn't matter. As I'm going to banish three Infernoid monsters again to be able to special summon a huge Infernoid monster that has a, a heavy storm-like effect. That was weird. I'm going to special summon Infernoid Deviati to my side of the build. I don't know if you guys seen that. I, I, that was kind of weird. I don't know why I did that. Maybe that was a glitch in the game. I don't know. But a Deviati would destroy all spells and trap cards on the field that are voids. Meaning that Chip's board would be cleared no matter what. But more importantly, I wanted that Deviato on the side of the field because I do not fear chip spell cards. Activate those as much as you please. It's those monster effects at this point in time that I want to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it right back to Chip. Let's see what he got for me. He's going to go ahead and draw his card. Does he have anything? No, it looks like we are going to be going into game three, ladies and gentlemen. Chip decidedly, single-handedly winning the first game. Me coming back. After him breaking my board and winning the second game, who will win this game as Chip is going to start off first? He's going to use Servant and then Damien into his scale the third time in a row. Talk about beginner's luck. You learn pendulums and you get the great cards. Making sure that's the correct card to start off with, he's now going to follow up with Abyss Actor, Curtain Razor, placing a counter on his Endamion, but also special summoning the Curtain Razor to his side of the field. He'll then follow up with Chronograph Sorcerer, gaining counters on his Servant of, in his servant of Endamion really fast, and also summoning another monster from his deck to his side of the field. Chronograph Sorcerer's effect will destroy itself to spell summon Time Gazer Magician to his side of the field. It looks like Chip has two monsters, two pendulum monsters on his side of the field without even committing his normal summon. Now, I don't disagree what Chip's gonna do next. He thinks that I play Cypher and Gear Gamma in this iteration, so he's gonna activate the Chronograph Sorcerer preemptively on his Servant of Endamion, and then he follows up by activating the Servant of Endamion to special summon itself to the side of the field, which allows him to special summon Mythical Beast Jackal King. Now, the reason why he does this again is because through our test games, he's seen me Cypher and Gear Gamma him, and that can sometimes literally stymie his entire play, so Chip is playing it uberly safe, spell summoning the Jackal King before he starts popping off with his combos, which meaning that, I mean, obviously I can't Cypher and Gear Gamma him. So he has those two monsters on his side of the field, two counters he'll be able to stop and monster effect. He can now follow up by using both of his monsters for an Electromite like he originally chose, and he doesn't have to worry about disruptions whatsoever. He's going to go ahead and special summon Heavy Metal Foes Electromite to his side of the field. And now he'll be able to trigger Electromite's effect, placing a Pendulum Monster from his deck to his extra deck. He already has the Jackal King on his side of the field. And it really depends on his hand sequence. That'll actually let us know. It looks like he doesn't have a way into a Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. He'll be able to place the Dark Worm from his deck to his extra deck, which is pretty pivotal. Now using the Electromite's effect, He's going to go ahead and destroy his Chronograph Sorcerer. He'll add a Chronograph Sorcerer from his deck to his hand. So it looks like he was just trying to get into more resources. Chip looks like that his hand isn't terrible. It's not a great hand. He still has to play around that gamble. feeling like he was going to lose. He's trying to make a board. So now Chip looks like, I got to tell you guys, he drew the spice this time. He's even telling me, if I remember correctly, he's like, I drew the spice. <laughs> spice Boy Chip is going to use Pot of Desires, place more counters on his Mythical Beast Jackal King, banish 10 cards from his deck to draw two cards. Now, there is a huge controversy about Pot of Desires. Is it a good card? Is it a bad card? In Pendulums, it is an amazing card. Look, we've tested this. We've, we've went over it. There, there's literally almost no way to banish everything you need with Desires and Pendulums. I feel like every Pendulum deck, every this type of Pendulum deck should be running Desires. So Chip now following up, he's going to go ahead and activate Chronograph Sorcerer into his scale, placing more counters on his Jackal King. He's now going to follow up by using Duelist Alliance since he does control that Chronograph. He'll be able to add that Pendulum card. Now, Desires didn't be fair to him this time around. 
He just so happened to banish all of his low scales through Pendulum Call. So instead, he's actually going to search Master Pendulum of the Draco Slayer. The card actually came in clutch. Not only is it a dragon monster to start popping off with your guard dragon plays, it just so happens to be a card that Duelist Alliance can search. So hey, it has a double meaning. I, I, actually, I knew I placed that card into the deck for a reason. So Chip can now activate that Master Pendulum into his scale. And it's going to place more counters on his Jackal King. His Jackal King has nine counters on it. It's pretty buff. I bet he's wishing that it once, once it, its negation wasn't once per turn. Because, man, that would be a ton of negates. Chip can now Pendulum Summon. And he will do so. Spell Summoning the Harmonizing Magician to where Electrify points to. That means that he might only be Spell Summoning another monster to his side of the field from the extra deck. Yeah, it looks like he's going to do that. He's going to Spell Summon that Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm from the extra deck to his side of the field, and now he'll be able to trigger the effect of his Harmonizing Magician. Harmonizing, Harmonizing Magician, I mean, I think I gave it away. This time around, Chip did banish both of his low scale, forcing him to go into the Master Pendulum. He's going to go ahead and get his Dark Worm to add his Donut, and then his Harmonizing Magician will special summon <laughs> the Black Fang Magician to his side of the field. Now, Chip is in an interesting position. He does have his zones full up, uh, he won't be able to make the guard dragon plays as he used to as Dark Worm is not in his farthest right zone, but it kind of doesn't matter. Chip actually has another uh, way that he's going to do it. He's going to use his guard dragon LP, or I'm sorry, his Dark Worm for a link summon into his guard dragon LP. And now he can use the Endamian. She served her role as well as the Electromite for a link summon. Oh man, he's going to switch extra monster zones and go right into the triple B dragon. Cardi B would be mad. Would be, why not, why not mad? Cardi B would be proud. Placing triple B dragon onto the field. <laughs> now, if you guys are listeners of Cardi B, or if you're like me and don't listen to Cardi B, and want to stay sick on some sick product, make sure you guys check out Imperium Duelist, ladies and gentlemen. Where if you use the code Cali Effect 10 off, you can receive 10% off your entire purchase. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Get 10% off on mats, sleeves, deck boxes. It does not matter, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty sick bass. They actually have a new brand of sleeves that are pretty decent. I like them. They're pretty cool. We're using them for speed duels currently. So Chip actually just so happened to banish his Luster Pendulum and his Destrudo. He's actually forced to spell some of the Aether to his side of the field. And Chip's looking at it like, oh man, he looked through his main deck, or his extra deck, not his extra deck, I'm sorry, he looked at his banished desires, he's forced to spell summon Aether, which some people were like, hey, Cali Effect, this has to be the worst desires, you banish both of your low scales, and banish your, your dragon targets other than Aether, still not, a, still not a bad desires, it was two free cards, as long as he didn't draw double desires with his two free cards, he's in there. Now he's gonna spell summon Guard Dragon Archipane to a side of the field, then spell summoning the Odd Eyes Vortex, it looks like Chip's going to be able to make almost the exact same board using the Guard Dragon LP and his Archipane for a Link Summon. He's going to make the Heretic Seal. And now the only thing is left for him to Synchro Summon one more time, ladies and gentlemen. I love this deck because he Link Summoned, he Fusion Summoned, he Pendulum Summoned, and now he's going to Synchro Summon. The only thing he's missing is an XC Summon, which the deck can do. Just throwing it out there. He's going to Synchro Summon into Warlord Savage Dragon. You gotta say it like that, ladies and gentlemen. It's Borlo Savage Dragon. Making a Biz Dweller wouldn't be smart because Infernal Monsters effects don't activate in the graveyard. It's a summoning procedure to bring them to your side of the field. So the Borlo Savage does provide another negate, and he does have a negate with the uh, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. He has a Mythical Beast Jackal King negate, and he has a disruption through his Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. So he's gonna go ahead and pass the turn right back to me. And boy, I'm telling you, when you talk about lucking up with a bad hand, I lucked up with a bad hand, as I'll be able to break his board with Super Polymerization. Whoa! Just, like, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is a crazy card. Super Polymerization is like a godsend the board breaking. I'll be able to fuse both of his, uh, his Fusion Monster, his Vortex, and his Savage Dragon for Predator Black Dragon Stapelia. Whoa, what about this sauce? Normally used against Danger Thunder Dragon. This time around, I can summon Dragon Stapelio on Chip's board. And this card is actually a really good negation. I want to keep this monster on my side of the field. 
Now I'm going to banish an Infernoid monster in my graveyard and the monster in my hand to spell summon Infernoid Atondal to my side of the field. And then I'll be able to normal summon another piece of spice, which just so happens to be Fire King Avatar Urvata. Now what Fire King Avatar Urvata does is that I can negate the activation of a monster effect, but I have to destroy a fire monster on my hand or field. Entering battle, I'll attack with a Tondal, declaring an attack on Chip's uh, Heretic Seal. He's going to use the Heretic Seal. I'm immediately going to spawn my Fire King Avatar Avanta, negating the effect. Chip's going to respond with his Mythical Beast Jackal King, but no! I have the response to his response. I'm going to use the on-field effect of my Predator Plant Dragostopelia. And Chip's like, wait, wait, time out. Hold on. This card has an effect? Yes, it actually does. It can place a counter on a monster, negate its effects, change it to level 1. That's it's really good right now. As I'm able to complete the process of breaking his board, replay a curse, so Watondo will not only be able to attack again, it can attack a second time due to its effect. Dragos Topelio is also going to get some insane damage, as well as Fire King Avatar Arvata. And Chip is at a meager 300 light points. Me... I'm wishing that I had another way to inflict damage to him because I would be winning right now. Man, this is just where you wish you had some type of burn card. This game would be over. But Chip has another time to live. And this time, oh my god, he's like Yugi Moto right now. Stop, Chip. Draw Kurtu. Destiny draw. I'm like, what is going on as he just so happens to top deck the pendulum call what the deuce ladies and gentlemen i had him dead to rights he's gonna discard the supreme king dragon dark worm and i'm like oh my god this is a problem this is a huge problem he's gonna discard the supreme king dragon dark worm to add not one but two pendulum magician monsters from his deck to his hand we already know one of them is more than likely a Black Fang Magician. The other one, probably Harmonizing Magician. Yep, that's exactly what he's going to get. And right now, I'm at a huge, huge disadvantage. I just want to let you guys know, we did have a little bit of camera problems, so it's going to be like an obvious jump cut. We actually had to uh, basically go back a little bit and then uh, continue the game because of our camera problems. We didn't even know what was going on. Fortunately, we did catch it early, though. So, Chip does have the Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm in his graveyard. He's going to activate the Dark Worm's effect. Here's the crazy thing. I can use my Inferno and Tondo to tribute it to negate and banish the Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm, which obviously will prevent a lot of things. But, dang, I'm thinking like 10 plays ahead right now. This is where you have that big brain. Look, looking at his extra deck, I'm like, he's going to be able to pendulum summon. He, I know he has a donut in his hand because he searched it with Dark Worm. He has a Harmonizing Magician, so he can definitely make a Bullsword Dragon. Doing some quick maths, if I get rid of my monster right now, he's going to win the game, as he'll be able to spell summon and make a Bullsword Dragon, blow away my board, use the Aether's effect, and I can't stop it with Fire King Avatar Avanti because I have no Fire Monster to destroy. This is just no point over right for me right now. The worst case situation is happening. Right now, I, I, like, I did the math again. If Chip does exactly what I'm thinking, if he plays it completely correct, he can break my board, but I still have life points. I can top deck a card. If I top deck something good, like a reasoning or something, we'll be back in this game. I didn't draw the best of hands, but this top deck can definitely make up for it. Chip normal summoning Black Fang Magician to his side of the field. He's now going to use both of his monsters for a Link Summon. Electromite is limited, so I don't have to worry about that at least. He's going to go ahead and make his Cypher Lord Lambda. Now, Lambda is a really good Link monster just for the sole reason that it's a generic Link monster with the highest attack. I mean, he doesn't play the Cypher card, so it is what it is. He'll now be able to Pendulum Summon his Harmonizing Magician to his side of the field, a Supreme King Donut to his side of the field, as well as two monsters from his extra deck to the side of the field. I, I just could not stop this. He's going to spell summon Aether, the evil empowering dragon, as well as a mythical beast, Jackal King. Man, that, that's just... And I'm looking at this board like I could have stopped the extra one, but it wouldn't have mattered because I would have had one less card, and he still would have been able to make it. Like, I didn't want to risk the Pot of Desires banishing all of his cards. Like, it was only one Pot of Desires, and it would be really bad to risk him using the Harmonizing Magician or not having the Harmonizing Magician because that would have been the only way I would have been able to survive this. You know, not controlling my own destiny. 
So he's going to use the Aether to banish, obviously. I'm going to use Powder Plant, Dragon Stapelio to stop it. His other monster is the Harmonizing Magician, so he'll be able to spell summon a monster from his deck to his side of the build. Like, I guess he actually does have the Pendulum Monster. That would have been a risky for the Biscuit situation, and I wouldn't have faulted anyone that would have played it different. I mean, seriously, if you go ahead and you stop the Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm, in theory, in short term, you've stopped his play and, until he just pendulum summons and then does all the things. But um, yeah, <laughs> if I had another fire monster in my hand, this actually would have been a very different game as I could have gained it with the Urvata, the Aether, and then I could have used the Dragostapelio to stop any of his monster effects, like his Boral Sword Dragon effect, which is really good. So yeah, <laughs> I wish I had that extra negate on the field right now. Well, actually, now that I think about it, no, I guess I could have played this different. I could have just used the Fire King Arvata to stop the Aether and then turned around and drag us to Paleo the Boral Sword. So, hey, it looks like we just found a misplay in my play. So, I mean, I guess that could have worked if I already seeing him have foresight to spell so many Boral Sword Dragon. We could have survived with more life points, I guess. So Chip now finally making the Boral Sword Dragon using his uh, Harmonizing and using... Oh, wow, it looks like he didn't even have targets. So, here we go again. <laughs> Cali Effect, you didn't play yourself. You didn't goofed as Bro Or is he going to attack with the Aether, destroying Maravata? Boral Sword Dragon being able to attack both of my monsters. He's doing it a little backwards, doing a little math right now. Attacking both of my monsters, then gaining my monster's attack. He's going to inflict a ton of damage to me, ladies and gentlemen. And you guys can say, Cali Effect, that was a big misplay. I think it's one of those control your own destinies you couldn't really get right because you don't know what your opponent exactly has so you kind of have to guess and i just so happened to get it wrong there's still a way for me to come back as he's gonna put me to the danger zone but not yet finished i have 550 life points looking at my graveyard if i draw an inferno decatron or a reasoning which hopefully he doesn't call inferno decatron or i get enough inferno monsters to my graveyard before the decatron i can still come back in this game Drawing my card, trying to figure out what I have, checking my graveyard. It's a monster game. It's not good. Chip is going to go ahead and win this match, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have any way to summon my Infernoid monsters. It's GG. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon. We have so many awesome rewards. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.